something back. It comes some, with something crazy, you know, and uh, un unexpected. Yeah, they're, afra like they're afraid artists. of that. They're afraid of the crazy stuff, so they don't even look for it. Like, they run from crazy stuff, but all the good new shit looks crazy at first. Like, it's 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 new. People are not good yeah, with yeah. new shit unless they, unless they appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of people are just, I don't know, uh, it, it, I might be wrong, you know, I might be, maybe I'm crazy, I'm the crazy one, but I've always had very much curiosity, you know, since I was a kid, you know, and I still have, and I'm always trying to learn something new every day, you know, if I can, you know, uh, I'd rather go in a conversation on Discord, and somebody brings up a topic, I don't, really don't know shit about, you know, and, they, and I can connect it to other topics I know, you know, and I try to uh, uh, get more data in my brain about reality to make my experience richer and bigger, you know, and not uh, say I know everything, live in my reality tunnel, and then count everything out which doesn't fit in the tunnel, you know, in my sense of reality, you know, I try to make it big, grow, grow it, you know, uh, get challenged, you know, it's, it's healthy to be challenged, you know. I'm meeting, a, I'm meeting a lot a lot more people like that lately. Like, a lot more people who are like us in that regard lately. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you need to... Some, sometimes you need to have a certain uh, type of mindset, you know, to feel... To breathe even, you know, to be able to breathe, you know, because in, in some places, you know, I feel like I can't breathe when I listen to... The level of conversation or the way it goes, you know, and the seriousness sometimes, you know. People take themselves so serious. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I would like to tell them, calm down, man. It's, uh, you need a balance, man. You can't be too serious with everything. I mean, you, you got to have some fun, too, you know. You, you got to feel the creative vibe flowing through you, you know. Feel alive, you know, in a way. Uh, create something on the moment, you know. In the moment, be there, you know. A lot of people think the past is the future. Like they think that because like they let they let themselves th think that things don't change, and like which is not true. They have to change. Things things do change, but on a daily basis, I think it becomes so monotonous that, that they stop. They don't and they don't have like great parents. They don't have mentors. You know, the people around them are kind of sheep, and it's hard to be. It's hard to stay curious uh, and unique. Yeah, because the school system is created to destroy our curiosity as kids, as people, and uh, not feed our creativity, not feed critical, but make us basically into good workers, robot zone, uh, zoom drones, you know, and it, it doesn't, yeah, it's education, the way it's done, most of the world now, it's not good, man, it's, it's destroying uh, children's minds, man, it's, uh, it's creating dead people, man, mental dead people. Yeah, I think even the greatest teachers in the world couldn't beat the systems that we have. Like the, the the teachers can be great, but the systems year after year are really designed to they are designed to make workers and not to cause trouble. So it, you know, it's pretty. It is. They teach a lot of stuff that's valuable, but the dark side of it is closed minds, right? Like it's it's educated kids. Have you ever had the sense that you feel claustrophobic around certain people? Uh since the close minded I mean you not know, not so much claustrophobic as like uh I don't know I feel something that's negative though it's it's not claustrophobic though it's something different Definitely a degree yeah, of uncomfort though Yeah it's it's like uh yeah it's weird man it's weird to describe man it uh you know uh, even in real life you know I I can't talk to most people anymore I I, I just can't man I refuse now man because I can almost predict what they're going to say and what they uh, saw yesterday on the television or what the current way uh, the program is injected into popular media, you know, and what celebrity they are after, you know. It's like people are running a script, you know. They base their life in the thought patterns upon a certain script prescribed, you know, it seems very rigid. Yeah, but whenever you meet somebody, whenever you don't ever get to the point when you're sure of it, you can expect it. But like, oh, you know, anytime you meet somebody, just remain open to the possibility that that's not them. Yeah, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. No, I, I remain as open as possible. Otherwise, uh, I would I would have met you and other people on Discord who are like you know. So you have to be open-minded always. Give people a chance anyway. You know. Uh, it's yeah. It's I don't know, man. It seems almost like. All the zombie movies, you know, we watched for decades. 
what's going down now, it seems, man. It's weird, huh? The, wa the walking dread. The, the walking, walking scared. Dead, <laughs> like, no! It's terrible! I'm scared! The walking... They want to eat my brain, man. The walking morons, man. They want to suck my brain out. <laughs> maybe it's the talking, maybe it's the talking bed, the, the talking bed. Yeah, the, cr the crapping dead, man. They, so, they use the toilet paper because they need to crap all day, man. So where, where do you <laughs> live? The paper. Where do you live again? Where are you in the world again? I forgot. Uh, in Amsterdam. Oh, nice, nice. nice. Uh, and where, where are you, man? Which, uh, uh, Buffalo, New York. America? Right by Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, okay. New York. Yeah. Cool, man. Cool, cool. So, have you have you been around Times Square? Uh, I've been there a few times. I mean, I visited a little when I was younger, and I lived in New York for a year after college. So, I mean, I've been there a, a decent amount, more than most people probably, I would think. Yeah, there was a guy making videos on Times Square, you know, with all the people from the street. It was really entertaining, right? a few years back. You know, uh, yeah, on the, the freaks are on the street, man, everywhere. <laughs> you know? I, I kind of want to go back. I really. I love New York. I, I would like to do that, actually. I, I, I have actually, I mean, I filmed in New York some, but never, never really consciously. I was much younger. Like, when I go to New York next yeah. time, I think I'm going to be, like, especially in, like, the op in Central Park. Like, I'm going to get, like, a, a lighter-than-air drone that looks like a flying saucer, eat some mushrooms, and fucking go nuts. Yeah, I, I love psychedelics, too, man. I'm, uh, I've done microdosing for a few years, three or four years, nonstop. I helped me quit tobacco and uh, alcohol man, a few years back. Yeah, the first time I ate mushrooms, I almost quit smoking. Like, I came so close. I really, that's, the next time I do them, I'm going to try to, like, be very open to just quitting forever. You know, try micro, try uh, microdosing the shrooms, and you, uh, what you can do if you grow them yourself is when they're wet, you know, when you harvest them, uh, pull, the, uh, pull the strands of the mushroom apart when it's wet, make it very thin. Put it on, pop, uh, on paper to dry, and because it's very thin, it will dry up into sort of tobacco almost. And what I've done for years now is not eat mushrooms anymore, but smoke them or vaporize them. And with smoking, you can dose it easier. With one puff, you can feel it already, and you can still function. Really? And yeah, yeah, yeah. You can smoke that shit, but you have to make it very thin. I've been smoking it for three, four years, and, and I've never had a bad trip anymore. And, uh, you know, I've, I've smoked them with LSD, by like doing LSD and then smoking mushrooms on top and weed, you know, and MDMA and uh, crystals and uh, everything, man. I, I love drugs, man, and drugs love me, man. <laughs> so, I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, what, what, is your name, what is your name in the room? Sir Vice, right? Sir, or Vile? Vile. Uh, yeah, Sir Vice. Sir Vice, Sir Vice yeah, okay. This is the name you gave me during the... Right. Covid chat where we met, you know. Right, right, right. It, that was that was a the idea of uh, the unholy grail, you know. You yeah. called me survive. <laughs> yeah, you I'm got. You, by you. Okay. I mean, you can have that. You can have survive. You can. Have, there's like nobody's really cemented their name. Servile. What do you like better, Service or Servile? What one is better for you? Servile, man. File. You want, better, you want yeah. Servile? All right. Well, change it to. You should yeah. check if you can change your can name. I, you should be able to. Yeah, let, yeah, let me yeah, it's good to change up names anyway now then. I mean, you can just keep changing your name and your avatar. You could write a whole book in here between 12 characters and it was just one author, right? It's just easier to do it with 12 authors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you have you uh, read that story I started, you know? that? Uh, what do you think about it? It's just one paragraph, but do you think it's something which will... Oh, in, uh, in, uh, hold on. I, like, that's one of the things I meant, like, you're one of the only people that actually put anything in here. Um, where is that? Yeah. Small, uh... Yeah, and, and I put a poet poem in, uh, from a few years back. Small one. Um. Yeah, and I, and I like creating new words, too, man. Play poems sometimes, you know? Because... You want to convey new concepts. I mean, I got one here. It says, I prophesize another Baba Boom. <laughs> Baba Boom because of Corona. Forbidden ass fruits are tempting. That, that's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try, try to be, make it funny, you know, too. Yeah. And not just... Uh...
Uh, yeah, this is what came in my brain, you know, and I had to write it down. You know, it just comes boom. The good thing, the good thing is this: the more the more we're willing to write like whatever the fuck we want and to be crazy, like all we got to do is recombine lines, you know, into like DNA for like the ninety percent of the world that isn't going to go so deep, right? So we take all the crazy shit, yeah. we get the most yeah. popular of the crazy stuff, and string it together properly, and then anybody can follow it without being taken too deep. And if somebody wants to go deep, then we'll be like, listen, we work all day long, right? We work for years, so there's deep yeah. too, but we're not trying to show that to everyone because it'll just scare them away. It's too much. You know, words, words are like viruses, you know, like uh, William Burroughs said, you know, words are viruses, right? You know? And uh, they can spread the ideas, you know, ideas are like viruses, you know? Everything. Every, every communication, you know, we have with other people, it's like a virus, you know? We infect each other in a way, you know? With, with something and it might be enthusiasm it might be uh, some energy you know it can be anything and i try to infect people with something good you know consciously i don't try to bring people down and go into that uh, dark uh, negative shit which will only take away my energy too man <laughs> you know it's a, it's a like a never-ending black hole man if you go yeah, but yeah, you know. if people get low enough, though, then they can then they can suck something off, and it actually like it'll pull you down. But it, they're so low that it brings them up, you know. Like they're so low that stealing from someone else doesn't even hurt them. It makes them feel better because they're they've just given the fuck up. You got to be careful with that shit. People can drag you down if you let them. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very aware of that. I always check my energy level, you know, when I'm uh, even online with people now more and more. And if I feel like my energy is being depleted, you know, I know to get stay the hell away from certain, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to a Polish guy two nights ago. He's really smart, but he's always talking through a translator. So I really like talking to him because I end up talking to a robot voice, but it was that was very tiring. But it wasn't because of anything negative, it was just it was just the fact that he's very serious, very smart, and talking through a robot. So I was loving it, but I also realized that like my brain got tired really fast. And like he's like 17, yeah. 17 year old kid, doesn't have a ton of friends, but he's very smart and interesting. So I feel bad. He's like I can't give him quite enough time because it's just so much. But it's all good shit. It's just hard stuff, you know. Sometimes it's just hard. It's good, but it's still fucking hard. Yeah. Tech problems. Yeah, yeah. I was I pressed the wrong button. Man. I wanted to. I an accident pressed on the video. I wanted to stop it, and I got disconnected. So right. Shit. That's uh, life. Man. You know what? I, I want to have two. I have two. I use a one push to talk thing that doesn't work for some reason because I have multiple keyboards hooked up, so it's really hard. So I use my mouse button, but I want a troll button. I want like a troll push to talk and a non troll push to talk. Right. So even though when I talk to you, you don't know for sure. The network knows, right? Like our the voice that we build together, it knows. So every time it knows if you're trolling or not. And then the people sort of try to guess when we play the games, right? Because you can't limit people only to truth and entertainment. That's just that's just not fair. You got to be able to make shit up. Yeah, I, I've lied there too, you know. And people uh, on one server, people were a little bit pissed off, and I told them, I'm just learning. I'm just teaching you that on the internet, you cannot trust anything. You know, people might be fucking with you. You know, there's no, you know, uh, that, that's how it, how it is, man. It's, uh, you know, you can't trust everything on the internet. <laughs> you know, make them aware a little bit. And I mean, we, we should have some creative liberty, you know, to create a interesting persona online, I believe. Man. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly the, according to real life, you know. Yeah, hold on one sec. Yeah, go ahead, man. I'm here, I'm just trying, I'm trying to find some fucking ham. I like ran to the fridge and I'm like, I have ham and I just want to eat ham. And it, it's like, I can't find it. I thought I was just going to grab it and run and come back to the computer. What the fuck is my ham? Maybe you run away, man. What the fuck? <laughs> ham, ham doesn't run. This one did, maybe. Like, you don't vote for man. kings. It became animated by some freak accident, man. It started running away. Dude, I will, I will lose my shit if my ham ran away. 
Oh, fuck. No, I'm not even kidding, dude. Where is my ham? Oh, there it is. It was under the milk. Yep. Yeah, you can blame the milk, man. Dude, I've been eating weird as fuck, though. Like, I'm literally, like, I just have ham. I don't even make sandwiches. I just dump mustard and habanero sauce on it and roll it into a tube and fucking suck it down. I've been eating so strangely. It's fun, though. Like, who gives a fuck right now? Yeah, I ate, I ate a shitload of falafel and fries, you know, yesterday before, so. With a shitload of mayonnaise went on it. Did you say falafel <laughs> with yogurt? Did you say falafel with fries? Yeah, with fries oh. and mayonnaise and uh, chili sauce, man. Did we talk about falafel philosophy? Falafelosophy. <laughs> no, that's gonna be that's gonna be our our fast food franchise, dude. We can make. Balls, balls, no, balls of falafel in a robot that fits in the walls of the franchise. I'm not even kidding. Mad cheap. You know what Roman candles are? Uh, fiber. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like yeah. So they come like 10 in a tube, and when you're done, you, yeah. you break the tube, and it's got like a, it's made of a scroll, right? It actually has something philosophical inside. It's going to be awesome. So, so cheap, so delicious. We're probably going to run them through a centrifuge. Before we, like, it's going to be, philosophy sounds stupid and hilarious. It's going to be a real thing. Yeah, every time you get the falafel, uh, you get a note, like a Chinese. Yep, exactly. A restaurant note with, a, with an inspiring quote or, or de-inspiring, whatever. Or a joke. You know, from, or a joke. Or a joke. Something which will, yeah, from, from based on philosophy and falafel. And you know how we win? You know how we win? We win with golden scrolls. You know the Charlie Chocolate Factory golden ticket? Right? I can't hear you now. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, you were cut out for a few oh. seconds. You know uh, the golden tickets from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to have golden scrolls. Like, literally golden scrolls. So, like, every million tubes is going to come with some random fucking prize. Like, some crazy shit. <laughs> We're gonna have a falafel ball tasting like shit, and that will be the golden prize, man. <laughs> if, you, if you if you have one falafel ball tasting like absolute order, that will be a ticket, man. Oh shit! Inside yeah, you it. bite into it, and, it, and there's something inside yeah. of it. Yeah, there's something inside of it, you know. And it, it might be a little bit of cyanide, you know. Though. Jesus! <laughs> if you survive the cyanide, then you will be invited. I think if you bite <laughs> like. It'll have a little thing inside, like it'll have a mold. So when you bite it, it'll like take a sample of DNA from your teeth, so nobody else can ch can uh, turn it in. Yeah, it will send the DNA to a Wi-Fi connection to directly to Bill Gates, so he can clone you. And then after he clones you, he will put you in a dungeon and rape you, man. Okay. <laughs> that will be the price. <laughs> <laughs> it will be eternal butt fucking by Bill Gates, man. That will be the winning price. The, the uh. <laughs> The cousin, the cousin of Fla philosophy is called is made of is basically donuts, and it's called Weir Donation, right? Like we are donation, Weir Donation is the cousin. That's the dessert side, and we basically say, listen, we will sell you a, the equivalent of a dozen donuts, right? They're going to be balls, just like Fla philosophy. We're going to sell them a whole yeah. box as big as an ordinary dozen for ten dollars, and because of the robot yeah. and what we how our labor costs are so low, we're going to try to sell it for ten. Really, bo really bougie donuts at a at a reasonable price. Five of those dollars we're gonna try to put in a cryptocurrency, and let them move them to some phil philanthropic project, like in the world. Because the falafel, the falafel we keep cheap. The donuts are more expensive because yeah. they're, they're they're worse for you, and we use yeah. it to generate money to like make greenhouses, dig wells, like crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. We can set up a st t a street theater groups. In the third world, for the poor children in the ghetto, so they can express themselves with theater because theater is very powerful. Man. It's a oh, very shit. powerful thing. Also, don't know about it. imagine if every time you ate, imagine every time you bought a box of donuts in the first world, some kids yeah. randomly in the third world got a box of yeah. fucking donuts. That would be that. That would be interesting. And it, they'd be way cheaper for them, right? Because like it's not going to cost as much where they are. You just have like a robotic cart that gets dropped into the yeah, city. Yeah, you, you basically sponsor. A, a sp whenever you buy a meal, you sponsor a meal for somebody who's poor. At but, the same time. Yeah, that that we can definitely do that, and it's gonna. It's all based at, like we're not trying to give people jobs. We're trying to make cheap food that's healthy, like or amazing. 
yeah, yeah. I mean, this this is interesting concept because and it could be a funny movie uh, too. We could just like when we have good ideas, we can just turn them into comedy. I think like depth brings yeah, comedy. Of course. Yeah, I, I like having fun, man. Anyway, I'm I'm mostly for fun, you know, for having fun on social media, and uh, when it becomes too serious, sometimes you know, uh, yeah, unless it's really interesting, you know, I I lose attention most of the time. You know, I, I like to keep uh, energy going, you know, uh, an up tempo energy for a while. That's that gives you the best feedback, you know. It uh, gives you more fuel and uh, enjoyment, you know. That's uh, the thing. I've been on a show uh, as a co-host for the last year. Uh, there was a guy called from Speakers Corner in the UK called Banksy Style. Right. He called himself Banksy and a Style, and he basically. Uh, so I was trolling him and other people, uh, like I always do, you know, in the chat sections. Right. So I stole his logo. Uh, th this is the logo I have now. I stole from him, and I called uh, the username Vanksy style, troll him. So I was trolling him, fucking with him a little, and then he said basically, "Hey, why don't you jump on next week? You know, if you have balls." Right. So I jumped on the next week on the show, and uh, the first time we hit it off, we had a good energy, and we kept going at it for four hours nonstop, jokes, nice, and laughs. You know, and, uh, for, for hours we, we we were all crying from laughing. You know. It's uh, really, really bad. And I've done a few shows like that on him, you know, like with free association and laughing our ass off as much as we can, you know. But, uh, but he was drunk. He's always drunk on the show, you know. So right. drunk trolling. And uh, I was under the influence, <laughs> of course. And, uh, that is, yeah, I mean, if, if you had like a show or, or a talk in which you are supposed to not be too serious and, and the main goal is to keep the comedy level, the, the high energy going as much as you can, as long as you can. See how much you can laugh without dying, you know, to, to see how many hours you can keep it up with freestyle improvisation. You know? that, that's something which I would like to participate in. Oh, that, that like, the, 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 peop the 12 people at any given moment who are, like, the most, say, energetic and have the highest score, like, I think they would be the ones at the round table, right? Like, the best 12... People with the best, like the most laughs per minute, whatever it is, whatever metrics the computer, like we decide the computer should use. Yeah, and, and creativity, improvisation, new stuff, novelty, you know, not just the uh, same old shit. <laughs> well, we, can, we can build kind of like a mountain, though, you know, like a lot of people will, pl will, will play the comedy game. There's a lot of funny people who would come into a yeah. video game where the goal was to talk to people and make them laugh, right? Like there might be a million in five years, like a lot of people love that shit, but then the best yeah, I mean, ones. Just the, talk shit. You know, Pretty much, yeah. Ahead. I mean, so, sometimes I want to go on Discord, I want to go to a channel in which I know nobody will be too serious, uh, and they won't derail the convo with too serious shit. And I just want to, you know, like an entertainment, you don't watch serious television all that. Sometimes you want to be entertained. And if you have a channel uh, in which you know when you come there, it will be always just it. You know, I would love something like that, you know, with people who, who join and... And, you know, I mean, like we did, you know, the first time we met, you know. Yeah, that was fun. In a way, you know. That was a funny night. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I like doing, you know, just uh, just, just bounce off each other and then go on and go on, you know, uh, in, in a non-malicious way, you know. I don't like to be malicious online. It's bad energy, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm all, almost never angry because of the reason. Don't be, don't be female-licious either. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to, I like to have fun, man. Uh, if if you can give me a good laugh, even if you troll me, I think it's fucking hilarious. It's fucking great. Do you know? <laughs> do you know? Do you know the dude? You know the, the 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 wild dude named Draco? No, no, no. I haven't been much on uh, Discord the last few months. I just came back, you know, after the hiatus. Well, he's just he's he's a little like you, except he's a dick. Like he's kind of like I think what you'd be like if you were a dickhead. Um, yeah. But, I mean, he's kind of funny anyways. He's a little over the top. He's like, he fucks with women and shit. But as a character, um, yeah. I think he could. he's probably worth having. He'll make an ass out of himself for sure. But so what? Like, you, you can't have, every night can't be perfect. Like, we got to have flaws, you know? People got to be able to laugh at us exactly, too. Exactly, exactly, man. You, have, you don't have to take yourself too serious either, man. It's not, because that will create pressure. I want to be pressureless. I don't want to be feeling like I'm, uh, you know, I want to be in a relaxed way, you know, on it, you know, doing it. No pressure at all, man. 
Yeah, I mean, on one hand, the world is burning and there's a ton of injustice, but if you try to take it on head on and be serious, like, you'll never, you have no chance. Like, you have no chance. If you take it too seriously, it'll, yeah. it'll destroy you. Yeah, if you take everything serious all day, all the shit, you, know, you, you won't have a life or mind left, man. You will be dead, dead meat, man. You'll be a living dead a zombie, man. So maybe it's an outlet for me, you know, the way they, uh, to talk shit online or have fun, you know. Maybe it's the way I cope with uh, the harsh reality, you know. Like they say, ignorance is bliss, reality is shit, you know. And I've written a poem about that too some years ago. <laughs> so, I mean, I can, imagine yes. you, I can imagine you saying a lot of fucked up shit, but I've never heard you like sound like you hate somebody or like you're doing it to to take somebody else down. Some people try to take other people down for real, and I hate that. No, because I will take myself down too by doing it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I look at it. Because uh, it will affect me too, you know? Anyway, <laughs> why would I want to bring myself down, you know? I don't see the point at all. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's useless, you know? Yeah, I, I like to listen to Osho a lot, you know? Sri Rajinesh Bhagwan, you know? I'm not a cult member, but he's pretty funny, you know? And uh, yeah. Who? Uh, Osho, you know, from uh, the Bhagwan, you know, Sri Rajnesh. I, I post a video. Right. He's fucking hilarious. He's, he was a sort of guru, but he was fucking funny, man. And he basically says, yeah, this life, uh, you don't have, need to have a meaning. Just play and be alive, man. Enjoy it. You know? <laughs> that, that, that you don't need no religion or other structure or people telling you... Uh, Telling, telling you, you know, live this way or that way or this way, all the bullshit, you know. So I, I will post uh, one funny talk by, uh, in the chat. And uh, he, he's fucking hilarious, man, in every talk of him. Yeah, I don't know he this mixes, guy. This, this could, be, could be fun. Yeah, he mixes, he mixes fun with uh, good spiritual lessons, man, in a way, like nobody else ever I mean, I hope that any anyone in the world who's like that, like if we do the right shit, like all those pe all the really good ones and the funny ones end up getting together somewhere, right? Like in the future, like lots of them gather in virtual spaces and get fucking nuts. Like that's what I like. All the funny people, all the people who are smart and and irreverent and don't take everything seriously, but are also decent people, right? Like I don't want. I just like good people too. Like I I love I love to laugh. I just, you know, like we said, you don't want to take yourself down. I don't want to laugh at other people's expense. I want to, like, elevate myself properly, too. Hold on, I'll be right back. Yeah, man. I only have one spoon left. I'm trying to bend it, like uh, that Israeli guy. Or, or Neo in the Matrix. Have you tried to bend it in your mind? <laughs> no, I only have one. I'm not going to fuck with the one spoon I have left. If I had two spoons, I would bend one. Yeah, you can eat with a bent spoon, man. No problem, man. <laughs> Imagine, you know, people coming to your house and you have bent all the spoons and knives and forks. Everything which is straight is crooked in your house, you know, the broomstick. There's no, there are no straight things anymore in your house. I mean, you could you could do almost any weird thing, right? As long as, like if you had, if you had new people over every day, it would you know like you could do the same thing, and people as long as you know what I'm saying you could entertain an unlimited number of people like four at a time. I kind of want to turn my apartment into like a place and just have people over like every night for dinner. Yeah, that can be fun. Yeah, I used to have a lot of people over, you know, in my house, but I got sick of it after a while. I'd like. Some people, you know, uh, staying all night, and I'm a drug user too. I, was, I used to drink a lot too, you know. That's not the issue, but some do the cocaine, start drinking like crazy, and they lose their mind. They keep repeating the same thing ten times over, you know. That's when I get sick of it. You know, then I think, get the fuck out of my house, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> there was a time when I liked cocaine, but I often did not like other people on cocaine. Like I liked me on cocaine. <laughs> Hey, there's nothing wrong with fucking cocaine or any drug if you, if you can handle it and, and uh, you, uh, you know you align with yourself you're not losing yourself too much 
I, I, I could I couldn't sleep when I took it at all, and I would out like I would always like before I fell asleep, I'd feel like I wanted to die. It was great when I was on it, but coming down from it was horrible for me. Yeah, yeah. The first time I did it ever, very late in life, uh, kept you know. I remember snorting and snorting it, and the post it that cocaine haze, you know, we were talking like hyper speed about nonsense <laughs> with everyone. And the next day I had bleeding nose and shit, man. <laughs> so I took too much good <laughs> shit. So <laughs> now nowadays I like uh, acid more, you know. I like acid and psychedelics. That's my main thing. I haven't seen TFE yet, but I might uh, uh, smoke some chunk, you know, that sort of stuff. Next to DMT plants that mix with other herbs. That's called C H. A N G A, you know. I've never done acid, but my my cousin was just talking to me about trying it, microdosing acid. We were talking about it yesterday. Yeah, microdosing is uh, pretty good, man. The trip lasts all day, and if you do only a little bit, you know, it won't fuck you up too much. But a few weeks back, I did a bigger dose, almost a full tap, and I'm very sensitive of uh, after all those years, it seems. And I, I was tripping for two days, man. You know, normally it lasts 12 hours. Uh, every time I smoked a little bit of weed, the trip came back. And for 48 hours, I was tripping, man. It was uh, almost close, you know. How do you describe the difference between, like, acid and mushrooms? Because I've never done, I've done, I love mushrooms. I've never done acid, though. Like, Yeah, mushrooms, I'm more careful with. Mushrooms, I don't fuck with, man. Mushrooms, uh can be scary, man. I mean, it's like an other entity almost, you know, if you do high doses, you know. It's like you're, you're overwhelmed, you know, almost. It's like you're, it's ego destroying, but, but that's it. If you don't overdo it much, it gives you very clear analytic headspace, in which you can analyze easier shit in your life, uh, like on mushrooms, but in a clearer way. It's like more disconnected from yourself, you know, like, more depersonalization, at least for me, you know, and I like ketamine too, because of these, you know. Never tried it, it, ketamine either. And it, and, and it puts you, the ketamine, the first time I did it last year, it was fucking magnificent, man. I did, I started doing a little bit more, and then suddenly I felt it, I was outdoor. Uh, I tried to walk home, and while I was walking with a bike, I couldn't ride my bicycle anymore. Uh, it felt like I was standing next to me, outside my body, and watching my body, and do all kinds of things for a few days. And it felt like I could see my scripts I was running normally, you know, like on an automatic pilot. And I could see and tell myself, hey, why the hell are you running this script? You can do this in a better way. So for me, it was a very beneficial uh, mind exploring tool, you know, uh, ketamine. You know, uh, it was very, very good for me at least. You know? My cousin was mentioning something similar, but he was still talking about acid, I think. Some kind of you know, objective yeah. reality thing where you can kind of like get behind yourself a little bit above and, and see and see what you're doing. Yeah, but with acid you can do it a little bit more clearer, you know, and it's all, uh, yeah, it, it's great for having new ideas too, you know, like with wheat. But with ketamine, uh, it totally knocks yourself out yourself, basically. It, it feels like you're not completely in your ego, in the center of your experience, in your body anymore. Like you're looking at it from outside, in a weird way. And acid doesn't do that, mushrooms don't do it either. Uh, you know, and that's something specific, which is to ketamine. And it's a great antidepressant too, man, by the way. Yeah, I've heard that. I'm also, I'm kind of amazed by like how, how effective mushrooms seem to be at antidepressant. Like, they say even for people who are dying, like it gives them perspective and they fucking deal with it, which is kind of crazy, right? Like, that they can handle that. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, unless you have experience with these kind of things, before I started using these kind of things, uh, even weed, you know, I started very late when I started using weed. Uh, it it expanded my mind, man, in a meaningful way. It felt like I had headspace, to, like I got away from uh, certain scripts or patterns I recorded all my life and I was running. E thought patterns can become scripts, you know, uh, which people think. And what I've been doing consciously, or try to the last few years, is to see my scripts and try to break them, 
when I want to, so I feel like I have more free will over myself. No? Yeah, I mean, I say that the, the you know, the, that's something they say in, uh, like, the box, you know, think out of the box. Yeah, 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 basically, yeah. Because, you know, for efficiency, our, uh, our brain uh, records everything we do, you know, like when you bicycle, you will never forget it or drive a car, you know, it will go automatically. Right. And, and, and you can get lost in that, you know, you can get lost in that type of headspace because it's easy. You don't have to think. And eventually, you can become like a zombie, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, with no new thought or, or original things coming in or, or even starting. You know, and with mushrooms, you get neuroplasticity, you know, you get, uh, it, it even regenerates certain brain cells which deal with patterns and addictions, you know, it, it can help uh, regrow your brain, man, mushrooms, you know? so, uh, they're oh. fucking beneficial, medicine, man. they're like, I, I use them also, I, I work out a lot, uh, weightlifting, you know, I've done for a long time, for decades. And I started using mushrooms as a pre-workout for the weightlifting session. You know, <laughs> and I got more strength and more power with them. Uh, microdosing, like 0 0.2 grams dried, you know. I'm going to try that. Silent okay. And uh, I, I saw a documentary years ago on Natural Geographic about the Zulus who used mushrooms when were going to battle. You know, and what they did was they had two judo uh, people, judo judokas, who normally fought each other, and they were about the same strength. You know, and they gave one guy the mushrooms, and one guy no mushrooms. The one guy who got the mushrooms, he became more sensitive, more alert, more aggression, and he totally destroyed the other guy, which he normally couldn't do. You know, oh. with, the, with the shrooms, one of my, uh, and he did. But, probably a little bit bigger dose, but in my experience, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 uh, for pre workout is great. And please start smoking them. It will be much easier uh, because you can take one puff, it will work within one minute, you will feel it when you smoke it. Never even uh, I really, dose you, it very easily. Never knew you could. I will look into that too. Yeah, yeah, but you need to, when you, when you grow the mushroom, you need to, uh, when it's wet, I did it on accident, you know, once. I, I pulled, it, pulled it apart to make it dry faster. And then what, what I was left is was very thin strands, and they were like tobacco. And that's when I thought, hey, why the hell, let me try to smoke this shit. <laughs> and I've, I've let other people at the party smoke too, you know, about 10, 10 or 15 different people, and they all felt it. And you take one puff, boom, it works within one minute, and you, you feel it instantly. It, it works uh, faster than eating. And you can then put the joint away and wait or, or take another puff so you can dose it like with weed, which makes a big difference, you know, in uh, how, how you can enjoy it without eating everything and then waiting for a trip and then it can be too much. You can't take it out your stomach, you know, <laughs> so you have to eat. You know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's much more convenient than smoking, it, in my opinion. And I mix it with hashish, you know, or tobacco even, and also other psychedelic herbs like Pectanum Hermala, uh, uh, wild lettuce, uh, Targetis lucida, and a few, because we have smart shops over here, you know, who sell all those psychedelic herbs. So I, I, I even put some white lotus or blue lotus flower in it. I started experimenting by making a herb joint with mushrooms and a shitload of other herbs, some of them psychedelic. And yeah, that is, that's fucking great, man. <laughs> <laughs> it gives a great, nice, clean, high bus. So, yeah, I like to experiment a lot, man. Try shit out, you know. So, it, I mean, that's good. Like, I, I don't experiment that much. I love to take some of the drugs. But, like, if other people experiment more, that's the more I know. So when it's time for me to take them, like, I have a better idea what the fuck might, you know, it might be good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, it's, it's, you have to be careful, you know. Don't overdo it. Don't, uh, you know, mindset and setting, you know, how do you feel? before you take it, you know, be sensible, you know. I one time took a, a lot of acid last year when I wasn't feeling that well in my headspace, you know. Uh, I was into the nihilistic philosophy, I was into philosophy more. And when I took the acid, and I was reading at that time some uh, Nietzsche and other nihilistic philosophy, 
and boom, uh, the, the asset made me feel almost like I was in existential terror, literally. Right. Uh, like I felt all everything I read, I felt it inside me, you know, very, very strongly, you know, uh, like really terrorizing, you know. And l- later it slowly went away, and I, I still did acid afterwards because I, I, I see every trip as a learning experience, you know. I'm not afraid of bad trips, you know. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know? it, will, it will at least confront you with something, you know, which might uh, be beneficial which was going on in your subconsciousness, you know, maybe. Uh, but the thing is, I've also very clear dreams, you know. I, I remember every morning since I was a kid. So my dream world is very uh, big part of my life, you know. I, when I get bored with normal reality of, of this world, you know, this script, this movie, you know, with this COVID and other bullshit, uh, I love to go to sleep, man. And then before I sleep, I take some acid or shoes to eat. So during my sleep, uh, my mind will be affected by the psychedelics, man, and the other stuff. I've never done that. And yeah, it's fucking great, man. Uh, your dreams can change, you know. And uh, I've all time lucid dreaming by taking a supplement called uh, DMAE, which is in fish. Uh, it's a bodybuilding supplement meant to, as a brain booster. Uh, uh, you know, I've been experimenting with nootropics too, you know. And, but that uh, supplement increases the chances of having a lucid dream. And I woke up in my dream and knowing I was, I was dreaming. And then unfortunately I woke up, you know, I couldn't stay in my dream and control it, you know, like in court mode, basically, you know, like Neo in the Matrix. That's what I was trying to do, you know. I mean, imagine having full control over your dream world, man, consciously, you know, well, and not be passive. I'd, be, I, I'd like I'd like a little technological help. Like I wouldn't mind. I think I'm gonna be sleeping in a helmet someday. You know, like a fully, mm-hmm. perfectly molded, like everything. And I feel like I'm gonna keep track of my like my sleep cycles, and gra- and and really give myself s- s- stimuli. You know, like really push myself at those times when I know I love to be to connect between the deeper dream world because it happens for me. But I mean, I usually forget my dreams by the time I'm fully awake. But yeah. I know there's a time when if you get the right trigger, like an in inception, you can come part way out, you know, like you can come out and then and then still step back in. I think but that's like involves like micro waking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, I've been experimenting with sleep deprivation too, you know, for a while. And it's based on an English guy who stayed awake for 11 days without any stimulants. Yeah, he was in a coffee bar and he got cognitive tests done on him. And he has been experimenting with sleep deprivation for years because he's a sort of shaman and many shamanic traditions have used it too in the past. And during the time when he was uh, being checked in the, in the UK in a bar, you know, in a pub, where he did the experiment with people who uh, he suddenly became by how do you call it? Normally, one hand is stronger than the other, right or left. Ambidextrous. Left. He became yeah, he became ambidextrous, and he was tested on it, and he became cognitively even better after staying awake for this. And I felt the same thing happening with me, you know. Sometimes I'm I'm uh, I'm awake for 24 hours now almost, and my mind only becomes clearer and calmer and better, you know. And when I've fall asleep finally and I wake up I always feel like I'm in some fog you know like uh, everything has turned to shit uh, you know in my body yeah. right right yeah I I stayed up a few times recently one of them I stayed up all night talking to this woman and literally when I was outside the next day before I went like it was I literally felt like I was on mushrooms it was sick <laughs> Just from one night, just from skipping like one night and using my brain, I just, when I stopped, I just, I mean, I was tired. It's like, it's almost yeah. like, it's like a positive chemotherapy. Like you tire out parts of your brain that can't stay awake and then you have access to other parts that, you know. Exactly. That guy uh, has a theory. I will post it too. I've been looking into it for years now. He has a theory that everybody's left brain is a defect and it, it uh, the ego part. And most people are stuck in the left brain. And uh, he based it on research with people who had brain damage, like stroke.
Right, I'm, uh, uh, I'm pounding artistic, cereal. Artistic. Yeah, and, and the people who, whose right brain that uh, defect, they became very, uh, like a zombie almost, you know, like a real strong aut autist. Right. You know? And he basically has a theory that uh, somehow in the development of humanity, we lost the Garden of Eden, you know, when we were in the forest eating fruit all day. Because fruit is an MAO inhibitor, which will help cross more DMT from your gut to the brain, you know, if you take enough uh, fruit all the time. And it is the most complex molecules structure in nature we can eat. That's in fruit, ripe fruit, and nothing else. And he basically says that our brain in the past, long time ago, developed this fast because we had the fruit uh, in the tropical forest. And when the tropical forest got hit by some natural disaster, we were forced out, our uh, foreparents. And then we started using mushrooms and shamanic uh, rituals, like pain rituals and other crazy shit, to re-trigger our right brain and to get some back from the past when we had a more deeper understanding of reality because our brain uh, was working better you know? uh, it, it was more uh, fully capable and so we're all zombies basically were, like, walking around most of us and it, i can sense sometimes when people if they are more right brain or more left brain easily <laughs> it seems oh which which one is creative i don't remember uh, right brain what yeah, the people who got left brain damage became more creative, some of them. And, uh, you know, they developed new skills, suddenly, artistic skills, everything. Of course, the left brain uh, completely gave out in them. And so the right brain head was forced to take over everything. But when the other way happens, the, the right brain dies for some reason, gets hurt, and the left brain has to do everything, then the people become very artistic and, and brain dead, basically. They get stuck into, and his book is called Left in the Darkness. I'll find it out. And uh, it, it's an interesting theory. I read the book too a few years ago. And uh, it, it's not very popular, but I, I would like to, you know, if other people are interested in it, uh, maybe talk about it in the future, you know, one day. If, uh, if it's something people... Uh, and I've really connected to his theory, you know, in a major way. I can't explain why. But it almost felt like he was a huge psycho. Because he also said, like, when people take certain drugs like MDMA, it also uh, lowers the um, uh, blood-brain barrier, to get more DOT, and it activates the right brain. You remember the soccer players, the hooligans in the 90s in the UK, uh, when the ecstasy came out, suddenly all those people who were fighting each other always, suddenly started hugging each other, became the best friends. Right. You know? High on MDMA. When MDMA went away, you know, they got used to it, or they abused more alcohol. The fights came back, you know? So for a moment, it, it was one fucking chemical that totally changed people's personality. And I can remember the first time, I was like in a new state. And I was uh, more logical, I was thinking, why the hell fighting why am i walking around angry that's the point you know it's it's like you get a revelation on from a higher perspective you know from the right brain possible so what what, 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 try to what about get in the right brain as much as you can. what about alcohol why you drank right uh, uh, i stopped drinking for years but with this COVID shit a few times i was drinking during our meeting the first time i was drunk oh really oh okay yeah i was drunk yeah, did you hear? <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought you. I, that's why. That's why I thought, but I didn't know if it was because. Because, like, what's the point of? What What is the point of alcohol exactly? Like, well, like it's like they make it legal, so obviously there's a point, right? Like, it just makes us tolerate shit, basically. Uh, it makes you feel good, you know. Uh, alcohol is uh, uh, targets a few different receptors in the brain, like the uh, GABA receptor, GABA which also gets targeted by GHB. You know, I like GHB more than GPL. Then I like alcohol because GPL and GHB it also is in your body and it's not toxic. And it puts you in a deep sleep and when you wake up rested and it increases growth hormone, bodybuilding drug years ago. And uh, 
Yeah, that gives you the same kind of buzz as with alcohol. And it makes some people really horny more than with alcohol. Even. <laughs> you know, GFB. <laughs> people will start fucking everything. <laughs> Like horny bonobo monkeys, man. Bonobo's best. I like bonobos. Bonobo, bonobos fuck the brains up, but at least they're fucking happy. Right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't even. I didn't even know. Like when I was young, I didn't know about bonobos. I feel like uh, I don't know. Like nobody talked about them, and then at some point in my life, I started hearing about bonobo, bonobos, and always been interested in them since. Yeah, I mean they basically resolve. All conflicts with uh, sex, <laughs> <laughs> sex and grooming, you know. I mean, and the chimps, they they do it with fights. You know, they're more, uh, how do you call it, hierarchical, hierarchical, you know, for the militaristic the chimps, the chimps, you know. I kind of wish it was possible to know, like, what we were like before we had language. Like, I don't know. If, obviously, we probably evolved some since then, but like, what was it like? To be as smart as we are, but have to have no fucking words, right? Like, just doing your shit, right? You're thinking, but you don't have the framework. So I would love to you, see. You might have been, might have created. Some people say, like uh, like Julian James. Uh, I'll write it down. I'll, I'll post a link. You know, I'll post a link of everything I mentioned, because I can move from topic to topic. You know, yeah, we should all do that. Yeah, it's more fun, you know, than being stuck. And uh, Julian James uh, had a book called The Pie Capital Mind, in which he says basically that uh, we first created the ego when we started using them. So we had the reference point for I and you, you know? Right. And before that, we had probably not an ego in the way we feel it now. And probably we were all in a group consciousness, shared group consciousness with our tribe and like uh, animals are, you know, like chimps. You know, uh, they, they're connected to the field, you know, like a morphogenetic field, you can shell drag or whatever. You know? And, uh, the, the, uh, and the, e the ego came with language, because with language, you lose telepathy, you know. If you had telepathy before, like the Tower of Babel, you know, the one oldest language, like minds connecting directly to each other, like birds, you know, fly around and all that shit. Uh, we lost it because we started making sounds with a mouth, with a mouth, you know, which could be interpreted in different ways. So you had to be on, in the in-group part of the tribe to know the code and the language. And then, uh, you know, so it, it, it created division, I think, you know, in humans. That's a pretty interesting thought. Yeah, it's just me, I'm yeah. over. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it by Julian James, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a, yeah, it's interesting. So maybe speaking was the, the, the fruit. Maybe we weren't supposed to talk. <laughs> you know, we were just supposed to listen to God and eat that. Like, maybe the fruit was language. Like, once we started talking over it, because we were going to figure shit out. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the oldest language must have been telepathy. You know, even now we have telepathy sometimes, you know, even on Discord sometimes I talk with certain person, I have it many times, you know, Chris, and that's, he starts talking, he starts to explain something difficult, and I just feel the words in for him, you know. He says, yeah, th you help me with those words, because I, to I told it in a different way than he was struggling with. And he said, hey, this makes sense, you know, and it's, it's like, even on Discord, you can connect with people, uh, there is no distance to me, you know, everything is field. Everything is at once everywhere, you know, I believe. <coughs> if, if you if, if you can do it, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I can only have a good conversation with people when I connect with them, you know, even on Discord, otherwise I can't, you know? I think it's just that the, the, the universe has something underlying it. And if, if you're, you're not, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not like you're connected, but you're like on, a, on any kind of tactical level, but if you're on the same, yeah level or wavelength it's just you, you yeah. the things pop to you from far away and yeah, it's cool yeah it's, it's like you're opening up a, a channel you know a unvisible channel with somebody playing like in a network you know you, you you're creating your internal brain network with all the neurons and synapses extends out into the world and it connects with other other networks you know basically 
And my, my whole shit is kind of like that. The, the, I think the whole world is eventually brought together by a single child, and, not, and whatever he's like the the, the, the he's just just the truth, right? He just sees, he just like he like realizes that just by just just living in accordance with the universe, like it, everything eventually comes together, right? It just takes like one person to to just actually be on on the like one kid to be on the highest level, and then that's like the key that the world needs, just one. Fully truthful one, being. One high frequency energy fucker with the light in the build. Yeah. <laughs> man, they're called, they're called, called human antennas. They're called human antennas. Right? We need a human antenna. I, I read recently that uh, our DNA uh, acts like a fractal antenna. It was on, published on uh, NLIBM, you know, the American government uh, or the, the official site, you know, with the, with the reports. And they found that DNA acts like a fractal antenna. It can it reacts to electromagnetic waves. And sometimes I feel like people react to each other unconsciously when they're near each other or outside. You know, it, uh, it goes on on a, on a very deep level. You know, the, the animalistic level. You know, the communication, like sensing each other out. You know, like is is there a danger with this person or not? You know, it all happens without words. You know. As soon as you see somebody, <laughs> or you go in a room suddenly, you know, you can all, uh, you haven't been there before to listening, and you can almost sense what the energy is, you know, what kind of thing was going on almost, you know. It's the kind of thing, though, that you don't, you don't want to pay too much attention to it. Like, I don't think we'll ever know what it is. Like, for, like, I don't think we'll ever know why that it's is. It's a mystery, why, why man. That. It's a mystery, it's a mystery. It's all like, all we can do is think and uh, start to speculate, and I like speculating, you know. Kind of, we can, I mean, we are it. We just gotta be it. Yeah, that's what Osho basically always said. You know, uh, you're alive. You know, he says your past uh, doesn't exist. Your future, you don't know what's gonna come. All you have is now, man. Like uh, you can feel alive or you can feel dead. You know, that's your choice. Man. Yeah, the one, the one, my one shit is fucking smoking. Like I'm smoking right now. The only thing, like, I, I, and I blame it on. The tobacco, of, weed. tobacco, tobacco, weed. tobacco. So, and I blame yeah, it on yeah. the dis, like the disturbance in the force. I'm not fully. Mm-hmm. It bothers like the things that are going on. They bother me. They they add stress to me, and I feel like it. You're the solving it, stuff. You're the solving stuff. We all we all. I I feel like in the field, whatever happens, you know, like uh, in the Jedi Jedi Knight, Star Wars field, you know, the force, you know, you can sense they sense it in the air, you know, in the ether. I think the ether is to you. And I think uh, what happens with a lot of people of, of us is when we get into a conflict with anybody or anything, uh, in, uh, we need a resolvent. You know, we need a, uh, we, we need to fix it so it becomes peace again, calmness again. That's what we do always. You know, we, we get into trouble or tension rises, and then you need a release. Stretch you know, out, to get a, a massage. Yeah you, <laughs> yeah, you go to a female. You know, the tension rises. It gets hot, she gets horny, you fuck, you orgasm, and then it's resolved. You all calm down. Right. You know? <laughs> That's what we do all the time. When you're hungry, our tension rises. If you don't have food, we will go nervous. As soon as we eat the food, we will calm down. Maybe, we, maybe micro-dosing everything. You know, maybe in the future, people will just have like a, a bottle of water, and it'll have like all sorts of molecules in it, and you just like drink your exact cocktail of, of different organic chemicals and drugs and fucking a little yeah, bit at a time I, i've been doing it uh, i believe in body alchemy i believe that the alchemical vehicle is the body and the brain and the mind and the spirit and not uh, some external thing i think like i said in this poet you know uh, which i posted let me if you don't mind i want to recite it in a second uh, if you don't mind if I can. Right. i've never done it i've never done the recitements you know Post, just post it's only the three of us here, though, right? So, <laughs> yeah, you, 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 me. <laughs> I might invite my other buddy, Sir, uh, Sir, uh, whatever, man, Sir Shithole, you know? <laughs> Sir, 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 now I know what, what name I'm going to Are you, uh, oh, oh, you said you, you didn't sleep, right? Like, I'm saying, like, I was going to say, 
Let's talk for 12 more minutes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get in my normal position. I might get a second wind. We'll see. But I mean, I'm no, here for a little you, bit. But if, if you need to sleep or go away, just tell me, man. No problem. Man. Happy anyway. I, I I think if I lay down, I'm gonna feel a lot better. I've just been moving around a lot. Once I get set up, I'll probably. Yeah. I mean, I don't give like I'll I'll talk to people at night. I don't even give a shit. I'll talk to people. I don't give a fuck if they fall asleep while we're talking. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, like, you, fuck it. You know what the good thing on Discord is? Uh, normally in real life, uh, I don't always meet people who click with me on the same frequency. You know, it's not always easy. You know, uh, but most people, I'm too. Uh, how do you call it? I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm too hyped for them. You know, for right. most people in real life. You know, my friends used to say, "Hey, you keep talking about things and things." And they were happy just drinking and switching their mind over, you know, right. their choice. And uh, at least on Discord, it's easier to connect with people who are uh, interesting or at least can hang, you know, with, with a level of uh, chaos or, or uh, insanity, you know. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will try to recite it the best way I can, man, uh, for the first time ever. Uh, insanity in red. Date is some years ago buried in hazy memory clouds. Uh, this came to me one day, you know. It said like uh, I was watching the news, you know, about shit going bad again, you know, like always. So then I wrote this, you know. To me, it's almost like a contagious disease. This violence and greed. When it starts to bleed, all the world of peace. When one gets contaminated, afflicted, and addicted, the mind becomes restless. And violence, excitement, frenzies for more of the same sick energy. Only when the utter destruction has been committed and there's nothing left but death and rubbles, only then humans come to the senses and seek peace amongst each other. Like alchemical reactions in the psyche fractioned, burnt up to its core, no fuel anymore. Then the lead becomes gold and the mind becomes soul. <laughs> so I think this was about alchemy, you know, uh, deep down a little bit. Oh, I like it. You know, how, how do people change, you know? How, how can people become enlightened or wiser, you know, or uh, better, better people, you know? And to me, it sometimes seems that only, you know, for a lot of people, only when shit hits a fan bad. You know, I mean, even with the COVID now, some people will become better people because of this, because they will be more aware of other people's suffering, old people and, and taking care, and, you know. So there's a good side to it, too, you know. Yeah, the problem is, like, yeah, there's, there definitely is. There's also the side some people are going to suffer so much that they fucking lose it. How do you, how do you mean move it? Lose it. Suffer, like, lose their shit. They're just going to suffer too much. and People are getting yeah, broken, yeah. too. It, you know, it's basically, uh, I'm not saying it's good because the economy destroying is unnecessary, you know, we should, uh, we should basically quarantine the uh, weak and people at risk and let everybody else go, you know, that's the most logical thing. But, uh, yeah, some, pe some people will not hack this shit, they will not handle it, man. and there have been suicides already, and uh, some people will start drinking much more, you know. And I've done too, you know, I went back to, I, I fell over the wagon a few times, you know, with this COVID shit. Right. Before that, I didn't drink for years, you know, I, just, I quit totally for years uh, with the with mushroom uh, at daily doses, you know, in the morning. So it, 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 it will, uh, it, it will, it's basically forcing people now to meditate, you know, to be alone, <laughs> to introspect. You know, to think about things, and not everybody can do that or, or uh, can handle that. Can, can be can be on themselves uh, alone. Yet. Not everybody can be alone. It's not uh, thing so. if, if they're not going to be okay. Sometimes I'm kind of happy like that they have Netflix. So like you, like they're not going to evolve. They're not gonna, like they're not going to do anything at this point. So like maybe it's good that the people who aren't able to deal with it can just if they're not going to grow, so they can just. Watch TV yeah. and and not get all not get too fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. It, every everybody has their own development, let's say. I think in in their part, life part. And uh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That, that's like too short. Set in that song, you know. Get in where you fit in. Right. <laughs> Just get in where you fit in and enjoy yourself. And 
don't go places or don't try to force yourself to fit in where you don't fit in, you know, to your own detriment. You know, yeah. I have this expectation that like, mo like I'm, I'm 47, most of my life I've kind of been, I've been the way I am, so I've dealt with a lot of, uh, a lot of rejection. Yeah, I'm, 40, I'm 46 too, man, like 45, 46. Nice. Uh, I mean... It's, it's good, like, we're not 55, right? We're not 65, we're not 75. We're, we're not those old people, yeah. we're not those old wankers. The, gl the, gla the glass... We still, we still semi-young, we don't... Uh, we yeah, the glass is half... The glass is, the glass is half full of shit. <laughs> you know, I think, I think uh, you know, ment it's also a mental thing, you know. Age. I, I've seen people who are 30, younger than me, who almost act like the dead, you know, almost like they were some sort of idea of what it is to be adult, you know, and then lose their child uh, energy completely, you know, I don't understand it, you know, I, it's the child energy, the curiosity I had as a kid, you know, about things, which I still have, which keeps me going, man. Yeah, but it, it can annoy the shit out of people who've given up, like, people, people who have given up on that and lost it, they can get super annoyed by people like us, like, it's not that they're bad people, they just, they want to have it, but it's gone. You know, and it's it's upsetting to them, like deep down. Uh, they can re they can rebuild it, but you have to uh, you know uh, let you have to stop thinking in a in a way, you know, and just let flow come to you, you know, let be authentic or, or not, you know, it's not be stuck, you know. I wrote a little poems about it too, you know, because I've been stuck too uh, on a psychological level before, and I felt like constricted, you know, and. With me, I felt constricted, because, and, and what I then did as an extreme experiment was uh, be alone, not be around my friends I was used to, or even family for a while. Just be on my own, uh, did the poems, uh, did the drawings, you know, uh, spent time in nature alone, thinking and writing shit down, because I feel like we become scripted, you know, in a way, by our surroundings, you know, like in the sitcom Friends, you know. You, you will see the same people every week. You come in in the same way, and before you know it, uh, you become a projection of you, which is created by them, you know? And you have a projection of them, how you want them to be forever, and you push it on them. So you become each other's prison, prison board, and prisoner, you know, in a way, right. sometimes. I mean, so I've tried to constantly break away from it, you know? I mean, remember, have you seen, you ever see Goldmember, the Austin Powers movie? Uh, yeah, years ago, but a fat boss. Yeah, well, like when 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 Doctor Evil just like I mean, it's not he he he's in the cage and he realizes the cage is is open, <laughs> and he just <laughs> pretends like he's like he's locked in again immediately. I can't remember that uh, scene specifically. He's just uh, in the, he's in a glass cage and and he and he goes to the door and he opens it and then he's just like oh fuck like yeah, and then he just goes right back in. <laughs> <laughs> why, why did he go right back in? Because he, because he didn't want, he was too scared to fucking leave. Like he didn't really want to get out at all. Yeah, because the cage is comfortable. We love comfort. <laughs> we don't. Most humans don't like change, uh, and the ones who do are maybe a little bit off or different. You know, uh, I, I like to see myself more as a shaman. You know, in the back in the olden days. If you were a little bit weird or, or different, and you had certain you know things, qualities, uh, you 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 could become a shaman. You could get a training outside the normal uh, society, and you could live on the edge of the village, man. You could be alone in nature and trip, and also connect to the village, you know, be in both places at the same time, you know. And nowadays, with people who have a little bit different brain or experiences, or schizoid people. They're fucking pathologized by society. Told them you're fucking crazy. You have no use. I've talked. I've spoken to some of schizophrenic people too, you know, in life. And then they basically uh, they become dysfunctional, not because of what's going on with them necessarily, but because the way society projects uh, a, a state of pathology onto them. Like you're not normal. You know, we're normal. Right. If you're sick, if you need to go in the hospital, do this, and it only adds to more problems to people who hear voices and shit, you know, people who are already, in a, you know, my ex-girlfriend, you know, had that issue too, she uh, always was sensitive, and she saw dead people walking around, and one day she saw uh, in her house, 
uh, hole opening and demons coming out, you know, that, that kind of shit. And she was put on seroxat, on a heavy dose of, very heavy dose of seroxat, uh, antidepressant. Uh, just to diminish those uh, things she saw you know, uh, all the time. So the, the question is, are those things all fake? Is it a hallucination or is it something which is there and we normally don't connect to? No, most people. We, uh, we don't get the information, you know. We're blind to it, basically. I wonder. I'm kind of like, I feel like... we. I don't know, we've done a lot to, uh, there's a lot of numb people, there's a lot of fucked up shit, but we also, I'm, I'm surprised and happy that we're here right now, like, that, that we still literally have a chance, like, a lot of people think there's no chance, right, like, they, they think that humanity's just fucked, but it's not true, like, it's really not true, it's not, it's not even been decided yet, but, like, we have all this tech, some of it came from war, and it, and it hasn't really destroyed the world, and even the things that are bad, like, they're not perpetual, you know? They're not set in concrete. We've just accepted them for now. Yeah, yeah we can change it if you want to. You know, bring back the power to ourselves. Change your script. Fuck, what, what, better. one of my biggest decisions lately has actually been, like, when do I go to bed? Like, I don't even know, like, I don't even know, like, what the right time is. Because a lot of times I've stayed up really late and I've gotten tired and I've gotten... So much done, and I keep, I keep wanting to push it. You know, like I've, I've gotten good results from pushing it. I'm thinking I gotta be like really careful when summer comes here, though. I gotta. Yeah, there's always a limit to your body, man. When you push it too much, you know, you don't rest enough or don't eat correctly. It's fine. Like, uh, the, yeah, then then it suddenly can hit you. You know, like sick stuff the, like that. The best the best conversations I have are usually the ones that like. If I don't have great conversations in a day, I talk all day. If I have, if I talk with a bunch of people I really like, I get, t I, I just am more tired. Like I'm happier, and I'm more tired. Like I can talk bullshit. I don't like to, right? But I've spent all day, like in this other community, you know, the chillism thing, and yeah. barely got tired at all. But we didn't talk about anything. <laughs> How do you mean you didn't talk about anything? It was just, just uh, it was just bullshit. There was nothing there that actually even made my brain work, so I didn't get tired. You know, there was like no genuine thought. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. It was more entertainment, more uh, like fun, uh, less. Uh, and I guess you gotta understand they they need that. And if you want to be in a community, you gotta understand that that many of them need that, and even you need that, right? Like, I mean, we, I like, need it too sometimes. I agree, man. You can't be in one model. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm watching the Grail, like I'm in touch with how stupid the universe is, but I'm also just, you know, laughing my balls off. Like, it's serious, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. not that serious. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, like the comedian said, you know, uh, from the nineties. Uh, enjoy your life, calm down. It's a, it's a ride, you know. It's just a ride. You step into, uh, you, you know, and then you come out and you die. You step out of the ride. You know? I forgot his name. The only hard part I say this, like, it's not, like, death is, death is nothing. Death is not a problem. Like, you just got to learn to deal with the dying part. It's just like the, the fear of the transition to, you know, to dying is the, is the really scary part, I think, for a lot of people. If you can lose the fear, you know, you will be free, man, mentally, uh, before you die. You will be more free of you all the time. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, I, like, most likely by the time, I'm not going to be happy when, when it comes time for me to die. I don't think I'm going to be super happy about it, but I feel like I will most likely have done in, in with the life I had, like, a lot. Like, I'll have done much. I'll have been there for other people. Some difference will be made. A lot of people will yeah. have left, and, and they'll be like, you know what? Like, this is this is what it is, you know? Like, you got to be grateful for what you had. Like, I'm glad, again, that we're not, like, we could be two 80-year-olds in a nursing home talking, right? Like, there are 80 year olds out there somewhere now who are like 80 year old versions of us and they yeah. might have a remotely similar connection but because of the generation and they're so old like they'll they'll never maybe see any of it happen you know and most of them are probably i don't know not entirely happy you know to like at this point to kind of die and they look at the world and they see like trump and all this weird shit and they're i feel bad for some of the people who just kind of missed the times that we're in by a couple decades. 
I'm just lucky that, you know, we're not old as fuck yet, really. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't plan on uh, getting old and dying in my brain, you know. I, I try to, I've met old people, some of them, uh, who at age 75 were mentally very young, man. Full of energy. Right. You know, it, it, they, they made a choice, basically. It's a mental choice, man. Like with anything. Yeah, my dad, my dad is 75, and he's not like he was never super creative, but he's actually doing pretty well. Like I can, he gets stressed out by me, but he got stressed out by me when he was 40, right? Like so, he he still doesn't get it, but he he, he laughs, he he gets the right jokes. Like I, he's really almost entirely still there, which is good to see. My my aunt is like 97, like she's almost fine, you know. Like mentally, she's almost the same as she was. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm planning on to keep microdose mushrooms on my, so hopefully my brain uh, stays good shape. You know? All right. Good, good health. That's my plan, and a lot of fruit, and exercise, and all that shit. Yeah, you have to have a certain way of doing things, you know, to stay as healthy as. Yeah, my uh, I mean, but I don't want to be crippled and mentally disabled before that time. That's hell. Yeah, that would be very hard. I would almost consider, like, having somebody kill me. Like, if I really couldn't live, you know, if I, I, I don't know, I'd be like, just let me go. If I can't participate with my consciousness, like, eh. Like, what, like it might, that might be rough. I might even, I, I mean, I'm not against, like, what, euthanasia for voluntary, right? If a person gets older and they realize that they are going to lose the ability to be a conscious being, like, if they, if they, want to leave the world peacefully like i i'm fine with you know like eat mushrooms you know and when you're at your happiest point like your friend will just like press a button and <laughs> like boom yeah I, let it go man it's so green man i mean i think if, if everyone had a device if everyone had like a, a a necklace that they wore that could kill them in like a second i think the world would be a lot happier like you know it'd be like oh something happens and you're in a lot of pain like a lot of pain I mean, the problem is people yeah. would, like, break their leg really bad and they'd kill themselves, right? Like, they would just be like, it hurts too much, and they would just die. And you'd be like, maybe we need to tune this down a little bit. <laughs> you know, people are dying just because of momentary physical pain. Because, I mean, sometimes I think we're tough, sometimes I think we're weak, but we're both, right? I mean, we can endure amazing things, and, and then, like, a toothache can, like, completely destroy a person at the same time. Yeah, we need better atheism laws. I mean, life is a holy... If it becomes uh, too much pain and it can't be fixed, you know, I'll let it go. Yeah, I think that's a... I, I, suffering is not good. Like, suffering is just not good. There's and there's there's ways to learn without suffering. I mean, you know, like you can have pain without suffering. You can have loss without suffering. Like, there's a lot of suffering. Like, real unnecessary pain that I think we can... We can... I don't know. We can get rid of a lot of it if we if we if we work together. And protect ourselves better because i mean a lot of history is crazy right you look back holy fuck the number of people that died and the ways that they fucking died and the number of animals that got fu it's crazy right like all this shit that's fucking happened in the last billions of years yeah i've become more or less an anti-natalist because of looking into history honestly uh into what happens what goes on in nature every day you know 24 7. You know, I mean, nature doesn't have a hospital for the animals or morphine, you know, <laughs> like we do. What is, what is natalism? What is that? I, I keep here, I... Uh, Anti-natalism is basically the idea that it's better for humanity not to procreate and uh, it could go extinct, basically. Jesus. It's pretty hardcore uh, shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't... An anti-natalist means we should end ourselves. Yeah, end, end as a species. No, species, no. <laughs> that's that's what it is. No, not me. I'm, sorry, I'm I mean, not an anti natalist I mean, There, there I... are good arguments for it and against it, but yeah. yeah but in yeah. the in the in the whole world right now, like I said, maybe that maybe there are 70 million people in the world who lived a life such that they can really clearly conceive of the better worlds that are possible. Like probably 99 cannot honestly conceive yet. Like. Of, of the beautiful possibilities that truly exist, right? Like, they absolutely exist. We are, like, if we use our intelligence co correctly and we, we model governance and learn how to have respect for human rights and for, like, 
the craziest shit as possible. Like we've done crazy shit like this, and only like one in ten thousand people is even really an innovator, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like a few, chosen few. Um, I feel like the like to me the chosen people are. Wait, what was it? Uh, see now I'm. I mean I'm here for a little while, but I'm definitely chosen to. Uh, I'm definitely. Uh, I can feel my brain slipping. A little, you know, like I, I'll start yeah. to. I'll start up a thought, and I will feel like um, maybe yeah, like you go. You, about, yeah, you try to run, and it, and like the the rug under you slides against the tile, <laughs> and the rug shoots out behind you, and you don't go anywhere. So it was that just happened to me. Eventually, you will stump to lady sleep and go deep. Eventually, yeah. I'm trying to. Uh, hey, what the hell was that? Six, the weirdest thing, like I just looked in in chillism, right? Like as we were talking, and some guy says. <laughs> says, what the fuck was that rant, right? Because I'm the only one that's been, like, writing shit. And, like, if you go into chillism, like, yeah. it's, like, all day. I don't know if anybody else wrote anything. Like, let me see if anybody... I think one one guy came into the room, and Bacon, Bones, Bacon Bone responded to me, and that's it. The whole day, nobody said anything. This guy's like, what the fuck was that rant? And I said, LOL, no one's here. I work all day. And he said, LK dead, at Yo Da Vinci, have fun working, King. And then, like, I clicked on him, and uh, there was a friend request for me, but I didn't have any reason, I didn't get any notification or anything. It was really weird, like, it was just, I, I don't know. I, do I know oh, oh, yeah, what, one question before I forget, what kind of software do you use to screen and record uh, in uh, Discord? Oh, uh, the, the voice at least. The voice. Oh, oh, I use o, just OBS. Oh, OBS. Okay. okay. I, yeah, I've, I've had OBS installed, but I, my laptop wasn't fast enough for it to stream live. I don't so, even. I have trouble streaming live. Like I like to just record. I'm only recording at like sixteen sixty seven. Like I, I should be able to do it at five thousand. Although the files would also get big. Like. Yeah, yeah. I'll try OBS or something else, man. Are you on PC? I think it, it's I think it's better optimized for for PC. And if you can't stream, just record shit and then like upload it overnight or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. The real problem is you can't edit on YouTube. All you can do is cut once. Like my like, I don't know if I was talking. I think I was talking to somebody else about this. I, I'm so tired. I don't even know. But like I'm trying to set up one, like I call it Edit Tour. Like it's kind of like a thing like YouTube, like a video storage site, but where everything is put up there to be mixed, which YouTube just provides no functionality for at all. Like, none. Like, you can't combine things. You can't, like, I consider sequences of words, uh, written, audio, and video, to be, like, pieces of, like, DNA, right? Like, you should be able to recombine them. And YouTube is just literally, like, advertising and shit. Like, I mean, there's some cool stuff here, but... Like, it's, it's such an antiquated dinosaur of of a, a business and it's probably at its peak of use right like more people are probably sitting home watching fucking youtube now than than maybe ever will do it yeah yeah social media will be good because of this i mean what else are you gonna do man eventually it also means I, television? I, we can find a lot more people too right like i linked a couple people in civil rights unites to uh to my channel um Kind of happy. Like, I actually got, I have this real time thing, so it's like, how many views do you get? And I got like, I think for the first time ever, except for in one anomalous case when a video was named Penis, I uh, I got like over 202 views in 48 days. It's really fun to watch these numbers creep up slowly. And if we had like 12 of us and we each had a channel, right? And we made shit kind of together. Like every day, I mean, we make some, we do something together. I don't care if it's Minecraft, like what, anything, right? Anything. It could be, we could each be on a word processor. We put in maybe an hour a day, and we each kind of do the shit from our own perspective. Um, I think we could we could get a lot of smart people. Like I think we could find a lot of smart people who would be interested not just in like enjoying it, but collaborating to create more of it. 
And then we and then we have virtual reality shows, and we literally we're gonna be eighty years old. We're gonna be. I I really think we're gonna be underwater in sensory deprivation with an aqua an aqualess rift headset on and like literally floating upside down in space. Like you and I, just like in empty space, just like looking at each other in space and talking. And like really able to see our own faces too, right? Because there's a, a mask over you and it also films your face. So we'll literally see each other in space through crystal clear space face masks. It's going to be awesome. And, and, and some drugs probably, honestly. <laughs> Like, there'll be, like, a little thing over your shoulder that literally says, like, you'll be biomonitoring yourself, so I'll literally see a graph of all the different, like, your sugar level, your mushroom level, your fucking THC, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and then I'll, and, like, one day you'll figure out, like, by keeping, you'll figure out what is your, like, what is your ideal micro dose, right? Like, what is your ideal? How do you fine-tune that shit? Because micro dosing is one thing. Microdosing multiple chemicals at, at at an appropriate level, that's some bomb yeah. shit, but it's difficult. It's, yeah, I've experienced it, so I know what I'm doing with my boat. So you become better at it, but it's like, I call it chemical surfing, you know? You surf your brain waves, chemically, basically. Oh, fuck. But the one thing that bothers me actually, like I, I, I put a fucking light in my face. It's the only thing that I like smoking, and the fact that to like make videos the way I do, I like to put some light on my face so I don't look like unattractive. <laughs> and there's oh, I, I think my brain is adjusting to light just constantly shining into like my fucking retinas. Hopefully LEDs aren't too dangerous. <laughs> uh, yeah, they say that they are more dangerous than normal lamps. Stay. Are, uh, not like a laser, but they are like uh, like an incoherent point to point uh, light source, right. not diffused. And some people say, especially the blue LED lights, you know, not good for you. you know? uh, disturb sleep patterns and other shit. Yeah, I think I'm not sure. Right? I, I do like I really want to. Like, I I believe that like part of what makes like some of the VR amazingness in the future good is is the fact that that even if you don't do it with high level radioactivity, like to some degree, your face itself will be illuminated, you know, like, and especially your eyes. So you got to use some light, but I think if you do it right and a person's like really wearing like a brilliant futuristic, like almost helmet, like, like a, a space, a time space helmet that you can really accurately capture their face and their eyes with very, very low numbers of photons, right? Like real, like the minimum, number of photons necessary to, to to get the data and i think it would be dra like a hundred thousand times less than the amount of light i shine on my face today so it, it should be i don't know there's a lot of tech in the future like I, like to, for us to figure out a better world before the tech goes away i like, can maybe it never does like we got to figure shit out while we have it Like, we go back to the Pony Express. It's tough to have this conversation on the Pony Express. Can you even, like, we should do that. We should start an internet site where every message you, you send takes two weeks to get to the other side. And so let's do, I think that would be hilarious, wouldn't it? Like, you have to send it. You got to wait two weeks before, like, oh, this is the one movie, ready? It was the idea of, it was called, uh, I think, maybe Encry Encrypto Night, you know? And it was a night, it was this company that sent a piece of information from uh, New York City to Los Angeles, right? And the, obviously the information traveled instantly, right? It was there in 50 microseconds. But for security's sake, they send the password across country like with a night, right? Like, like Python or maybe 12 of them, right? And it's literally modern day America. And you literally have 12 comedians dressed up like, I mean, in whatever, you know, the unholy grail would be, like whatever kind of modern armor, and they literally ride across country on horses. And and that, I think, especially if we got some drones that, that people don't see, would, would, would just produce the most fucking hilarious shit. Like literally just pretending to carry an encryption code across country. Like when we could have just carried the whole message, right? It doesn't even make sense why, like, why you'd be carrying it on foot, which is why I like it. It doesn't have to make sense, man. It has to be funny. Just funny, yeah. Just well, set up, set up, it. set up comedy. That's it. Yeah. I, 
I work in poverty. Wait, in pro in poverty. Wait, in poverty. In poverty. In poverty. Yeah, that's what I meant. In, in poverty. <laughs> I work in poverty. <laughs> I'm fucking proverbios. I'm a proverbios. Proverbial flexible, basically. Flexible shit. Um. um You know, there's one word written on the walls of my house, and it says, Awaken Baker's Dozen. <laughs> Baker's Baker's Dozen. Yeah, that's like 13 crazy motherfuckers. Like, and, and also, what, like, there's a lot of ideas that I think we're going to be able to fit in. Like, one of them is just the idea that you have, like, you have the 13 knights, right? And, and in some way, shape, or form, they all think that they're, like, they're all trying to be, like, the guy, right? Like, maybe they all think they are the guy you know they all like maybe one of the, like they all think they're jesus right it's just a bunch of dudes but like they all think like or they're all trying they're all fighting to be that 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 uh, the special character from like the lego movie like like so instead of having a head character you just you don't know like the audience doesn't know who king arthur is right yeah and, and it should be random you know and not a chronological storyline or what should be some random shit, you know, dropping it. Yeah, how do we do, like, how do we get a good, I mean, there's so many gimmicks you could use, like, um, I'm trying to think, what, what would be, I mean, it, there's so many different things to think about. There's so many ways to do every, like, every point in, 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 in these ideas, I think there's, like, there are, there's always options, which is why, I like to do it with a bunch of other people and then you get to an option and instead of me having to make a decision, I just say what I like. Like everybody just says what they like, you know, and not like under the table. And then you just kind of look up at the whiteboard and it, and it says what, what we want, right? It doesn't say who wants what it just be like, all right, like we got nine out of 13 of us want this. Like there's no perfect answer. Let's just say, you know, for now that's the scene, right? Like that's, that's the interpretation of the idea that we're going to try to make. If it doesn't work, it's not funny enough, then we'll go to the second idea, right? But it's kind of like, set it up, keep it a little democratic. I don't think we're going to be, like, making a movie with hundreds of people. I hope, like, if we can find a dozen, a couple dozen people is probably as many as you need without being too many. Yeah, I'll be back in a second. Hold on.